Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Abdirahman El Oufir and I am uh, uh, the CEO of the, the, the company. Uh, thank you for attending this conference call. Uh, we are going to provide you with the numbers of the first half. And uh, first, I want to introduce uh, Pierre Condolier, the group CFO, uh, who will do the uh, introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so the, the Rispo Group has just released its half-year results. Um, the press release is available on our website. Our half-year report uh, with the auditor uh, report is also available on our website. And uh, the slides that we will go through are also available on our website. I will hand over to Abderrahman El Aoufir uh, for the first part of the presentation. Thank you, Pierre. Can we go to the following slide? Okay. okay. So, I mean, the majority of you know already our group, but uh, just we give you some figures, you know, at a glance, you know, to be very familiar with what we have achieved last year. So, the group has handled, you know, 4.6 million of uh, uh, fair scrap, 770,000 tons of non fair scrap. Maybe we are the top handler of non ferrous in, I mean, in the recycling industry. We have handled also 560,000 tons of and uh, of life vehicles, 330,000 of uh, equipment that's come from waste of uh, elec elec uh, electric and electronic equipment. And we have produced 80,000 of tons of aluminium ingots and 35,000 of lead ingots. Our business model, our strengths are based in uh, you know, our sector. Our, se our sector, it's a growing sector due to the green economy and circular economy. A lot of blast furnaces will switch to electric arc furnaces in the upcoming years, and we will uh, see a huge demand of a uh, recycled uh, scrap metal. This is valid for you know the steel industry and also it's valid for the metal industry. We are seeing now that a lot of uh, producers of aluminium and copper try to have in their mixed products recycled metals to you know to show that they are green. Okay. Our group has always benefited from a uh, skilled uh, senior management team and in the key position we have always people with years of experience and they know the business in, uh, inside out. Uh, we have always uh, invested you know, in the state of art technology. The group owns the majority of its assets. He is the landlord of the, the majority of the properties. We have a very strong balance uh, sheet where our equity is higher than our significantly higher than our debts, and we have no short significant repayments. We also have a family, you know, sh shareholder that has a long term strategic industrial uh, vision, which allow us, you know, to have always an analysis for the long term. OK, can switch maybe to the okay. for the first half. You know, the numbers have been as the following. We have achieved a revenue of 1.7 billion euro, an EBDA of 142 million euro. We are present in 13 countries and our headcount is 5,920 employees. As you know, we have two divisions. One is recycling and the other one is services to municipality. So the recycling obviously is the major part uh, of the, the business with 1.6 billion revenue. Less, uh, it's more capex driven than, I mean, labor driven. So we have 3,890 employees and we have handled during the first half 2,557 tons. And we are in two, we operate in 271 uh, sites. For the services to municipalities, the revenue for the first half has been at 97 million euro, 1,851 employees, 
and 1.6 million tons collected, and we are present in two countries, France and Canada. As you probably know, we have a, a 48%, 30, 48, 30% of uh, Elior that we have acquired last year. And we are happy to announce that, I mean, uh, after one year, we have achieved not only our positive uh, numbers, but also a significant organic growth. The group has operated in an adverse uh, environment. 2024 uh, has, I mean, we are seeing a slowdown in the growth economy. We have seen also for the last quarter a very high uh, price for the energy. It doesn't matter if it's power, if it's gas, if it's fuel. Mm. High interest rates. And we have been victim in the month of November of a cyber attack. Uh, that has impacted significantly our numbers in the first quarter. But now everything is over and we, we are back to normal. Okay. We have also uh, suffered um, because uh, when we bought uh, ECOR uh, two years ago, um, the competition authority has re some requirements to provide you know uh, the company that's bought you know the uh, re uh, site remedies with shredder feed of almost you know 22000 tons per month so this has an impact because the price that we are you know we are selling this uh, quantity uh, was a, a low price with almost no margin and this requirement will end at the end of june so we have only one month uh, uh, last we have generated a positive cash flow despite our lower EBITDA and uh, the despite you now the dividend distribution. Okay. For the ECOR business, we have fully integrated. Um, I mean, in terms of uh, uh, staff, in terms of systems, uh, in terms of uh, legal restructuring, uh, 90, 80 percent of the integration has been achieved. Okay. Um, one thing that is uh, we are proud of, uh, of is that uh, when we compare our numbers to our main competitors that publish their com uh, their numbers, we 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 have a very good performance. Even if our EBDA is lower than uh, the last year at the same uh, at the same time, uh, our competitors have suffered a lot more. Okay. Uh, we are also happy with uh, after one year of management of Mr. Durishbur that Elior could achieve uh, a positive number, uh, positive EBT, uh, obviously a significant increase in the EBDA, but also, as I said before, um, a significant uh, organic growth. Okay. If we take uh, the market value of Elior, our shares will be you now in Elior now. Uh, the valuation will be 435 million euro as of you know May 28th. We can go to the following slide. Here, just to give you you know um, a glance about you know the steel, the crude steel uh, production. Mm. As you can see, you know even if there is a, a, an increase all the areas i mean we, where we operate there is a decrease you know turkey europe um, uh, and we have to be very careful because you know the all the steel that comes from the blast furnaces you can't reduce the production unless you shut down you know the the furnace but the electric arc furnace uh, you know you can reduce the production uh, and these numbers, I mean, there is an increase in, you know, this, the crude steel that comes from uh, the blast furnace, and there is a significant decrease from the steel that comes from the electric arc furnace. And I will leave the, the floor now to Pierre to go into details for the, our numbers for the first half. Thank you. Thank you, Abderrahman. 
the, the turnover of the group for the six months ended uh, March 31st, 2024 is uh, 1,700,000. And uh, 32.7 million euro, which is a decrease by 4.9 percent compared to prior year. Uh, prior year, uh, we will see later that recycling decreases by 5.5 percent, and that service to municipalities increases by 7.8 percent. Current EBDA is 142 million euro, which is a decrease by 20.8 percent, and the EBDA ratio is 8.2 percent. Uh, we are just in the middle of, um, of the interval uh, we we gave, which was uh, 140 one, to 145 million, when we issued a press release uh, by the mid of April. If we go uh, lower in the uh, PNL, the current EBIT stands at 65 million euro, which is a decrease by 38.8% compared to prior year. We have more depreciation uh, than we had uh, last year. We have uh, 77 million euro depreciation compared to uh, 73 last year uh, due to uh, uh, higher capex um, last year. Uh, the current EBIT ratio is uh, 65, 3.8% uh, uh, compared to 5.8 last year. <clears throat> we have, I would say, a very clean PNL because the only uh, non-recurring item that we have, it's not an expense, it's uh, an income. Uh, we have a litigation with uh, Veolia, uh, which has been lasting for 10 years, and uh, the last decision was in our favor, and we have recorded a 3.8 million gain, which we cashed in in uh, April. So the EBIT uh, increases by uh, 39% and stands at 68.7 million euro. Net finance cost is an expense by 18.8 uh, million euro, which is 5.4 million more than last year due to, uh, I would say, a stable but higher interest rates compared to last year. Last year, they were increasing during this half year and also to some extent uh, a higher average debt compared to prior year. EBT is 48.1 million euro compared to 98 million euro last year. Income tax is lower than last year because uh, pre-tax income is uh, also lower and net income is uh, 32.3 million euro. Uh, which is 51.4 million euro compared to prior year and 31.4 million euro is attributable to shareholders. Uh, just uh, before we go to the next page, uh, Elior um, is a share of income is a positive income still uh, limited it's 0 0.5 million euro and it was an expense by 5.6 million euro last year and uh, 37 million euro negative in H2. So we can expect that uh, this number also uh, increase uh, improves in uh, in H2. Uh, just a small, um, I would say, scope and uh, figures. First, we have reclassified the company Dorisbourg Environnement from the holding to the recycling uh, sector because it has merged with the company Cofra Metal, which was the main trading company of the group, and uh, otherwise the numbers would have been uh, nonsense. Uh, so uh, for the group as a whole, it does not impact the results, but um, when you calculate uh, recycling and sector and holding sector, uh, prior year figure have also been adjusted. Uh, as Abderman and Aufir uh, explained, we have sold eight, eight sites on 1st of January last year, which means that last year we had three months of full operations of this site, which we did not have this uh, year. And we have also a supply commitment for the four shredders, uh, which started uh, in, um, in January 23, and which represents uh, roughly 50% of the volume of the shredders with a low or no margin. And uh, so it was three months last year and it is six months this year. 
For the recycling activity, the revenue is a, a 1.6 billion euro compared to 1.7 billion euro, which is 5.5 million euro uh, percent uh, compared to last year. Current EBITDA stands at 120 million euro, which is a 7.5 percent EBITDA to revenue ratio. It's a decrease by uh, 26.7 million euro. EBIT stands at um, 52.5 million euro, which is a decrease by 48.6 million euro and a ratio of EBIT 3.2%. Uh, Ferrous scrap volume uh, decreased by 4.5% uh, and 2.4% uh, on a like for like basis, um, which in relation to prior page uh, with the remedies impact. Average price are very comparable uh, compared to last year. Its uh, unit price is 8 euro or 2.3% uh, lower than last year, but it's very comparable. Um, the margins were impacted negatively, both my, by market conditions and uh, mainly also, I would say, by the lack of monitoring tool during cyber attack in November and December. We said what we, that we estimate the impact of the cyber attack um, uh, between 15 and 20 million euro. It's mainly the margin on, uh, on ferrous and non-ferrous volumes. To some extent, decrease in volumes, but mainly unit margin, which were lower because we had no tool to, to monitor the margins. The non-ferrous volume decreased by 1.8% compared to last year. You will see uh, that we have uh, also restated the volumes uh, for last year uh, in order to be comparable to with this year because um, we will change to some extent the way we calculate the volume uh, for uh, very specific materials which have no value and which were computed in before uh, in the volumes and we do not factor them anymore. Uh, as the same for the ferrous, the unit prices are very comparable this year uh, with prior year. It's 1.7% lower. Uh, the trends are different according to the metals. We have an increase in volumes uh, in copper, in aluminium except ingots, and we have a uh, decrease in aluminium ingots. Uh, it's uh, linked to the automotive market, uh, which in volumes is uh, lower compared to, to prior year, and also in decrease in uh, stainless steel volumes. And uh, for lead ingots, the volumes are stable. So I will be very short with uh, on this page. You can see the price uh, which we have already said for the ferrous, which is very close and otherwise nothing uh, specific to, to report. So if we go to the, to the volume side, um, five, minus 5.5 percent uh, for the ferrous scrap. Uh, which uh, results uh, in a 6.7 decrease in the revenue for ferrous scrap. You will see, and it's not often the case, that non-ferrous revenue is higher than uh, ferrous scrap revenue and stands at uh, 766 million euro. It's also the results of all the capex which have been done in prior years in non-ferrous. Service revenue uh, decreases by 2.6% or 2.3 million euro. Uh, there is a scope effect of 3 million, uh, which has been reclassified in, um, in Ferrous. And uh, otherwise, it's a very small decrease, but I would say all the type of services, uh, it's linked to the, to the I would say, uh, economic situation, which uh, was not been uh, uh, very good. So we have a little less paper, a little less cardboard, a little less plastics, a little less with recycling, a little less otherwise, all types of services. Um, and it results in a 12% decrease. We can go to the next page. So um, the bridge of recycling EBDA. Uh, we had last year in uh, recycling 166.5 million euro. We have uh, this year 122 million euro. We first have a scope effect amounting to less 
to minus 3 million euro, which is uh, the EBDA over three months last year of the eight yards which we have sold. We have a negative gross margin impact amounting to 50 million euro, which includes the 15 to 20 million impact linked to the cyber attack. Um, decrease in EBITDA by 9 million euro to uh, services. We have a saving in staff, staff cost amounting to 8 million euro, which is mainly a savings, I would say full year impact saving or full semester impact saving uh, of the ECO integration and also savings in Spain. Uh, there was a management uh, initiative to reduce staff expense last year at ECO, um, which uh, have full impact over this uh, half year. Um, energy cost, to be honest, we would have expected a higher positive impact than 2 million, but we have had uh, invoices, uh, unexpected invoices from uh, our supplier which came early in 24 and were related to 23. Um, so uh, we are confident that the saving will be significantly higher in H2 uh, compared to, um, to, H1, to H1. We have a saving also in maintenance, which is uh, related to, to volumes, I would say volumes which are lower in uh, ferro scrap. If we look at the change in the BDA by country, uh, I would like to say uh, France is our main uh, driver for EBDA, so it's not a surprise that is also the re region where uh, the EBDA decreased most. And the positive news is that the EBDA in Spain is increasing by 1.6 million euro. Uh, Spain has a very good and diversified portfolio of activities and uh, very resilient. A few words about service to municipalities. I would say that uh, indeed it's uh, five to six years that year after year, year after year, this division improved its uh, profitability. Uh, we are close to uh, uh, 200 million euro revenue on a yearly basis. Indeed, we will not achieve uh, 200 million euro as one contract, significant contract, ended uh, at the end of March. But it was a, it was a decision uh, not to compete seriously for the renewal of this contract in Marseille because it was uh, uh, with very low margin and too difficult from um, an operating point of view. Um, so the performance will not impacted will not be impacted negatively of the end of this contract in H2. So the revenue is 97.2 million euro, which is an increase by 7.8 percent. Current EBITDA is 20 million euro. Current EBIT, I would say, which is more realistic for this uh, business because uh, depreciation is also uh, included in, uh, in revenue. Current EBIT is 13.1 uh, million euro, which is an increase by 100% compared to last year. And it's a 13.4% EBITDA to, uh, EBIT to sales ratio, which is outstanding. You see that the company is uh, performing well in uh, several areas. Uh, and we have also one non-recurring item, which are already uh, spoke about and so EBIT stands at 16.8 million euro compared to 2.7 million euro last year because last year we had the negative 3.8 million impact. Holding, uh, nothing specific to, to report, we can skip in this page. A few words uh, about uh, Elior. So, you, of course, you, you, if you want to have more details, uh, you can go into uh, Elior results. Uh, I would say that we will we'll speak more uh, about Elior as an investor than uh, from operations. So, we have an increase um, in uh, revenue plus 26% uh, 
um, plus 5.9 percent is organic growth and the scope effect uh, amounting to 20 percent which is a, a full semester consolidation of Dorishbo multi-service which was not consolidated last year EBITDA, which is very close to EBIT, was 100 million euro, uh, which was an increase by 59% compared to last year, or 144%, which is very good performance. Net debt also reduced by, um, by uh, 140 million euro, roughly over six months, which is also a good free cash flow generation. Uh, just a few words about the, the valuation. Uh, last year, uh, at the closing, the market cap of Elior was 100, 904 million euro. We own, as of today, 48.25%, which we, means that our market share in Elior uh, is valued as 435 million euro. Uh, whereas now value, book value, it's 396 million. Um, our market cap at the Richbourg is a bit below uh, 800 million euro. If you deduct um, the, the, uh, the, our value in uh, Elior, I would say that there is not a lot which remains for our recycling uh, division. To we'll let you do uh, your own calculation. We have managed to reduce the, our debt by 4 million euros uh, over the half year. We have already spoke about uh, EBITDA, which stood at uh, 142 million euro. We still have a significant capex, uh, 116.9 million euro over the half year, which is 82.3% uh, of EBITDA. Indeed, we decided to, to reduce capex by uh, end of a prior year and um, you have already a backlog of capex uh, which is still in running uh, when you decided to, to reduce so we have uh, we were already happy to see that in february and march it was lower and uh, it will be uh, lower in h2 and we will certainly still be uh, above 50 percent uh, at uh, uh, or close to 50 to 55 percent at uh, uh, end of September, but that will be in age two, a good generation of EBITDA, lower capex, uh, working capital requirements to stay close to what it is uh, at the end of March. So we will have a significant deleveraging over H2. In addition to that, we will not have a dividend in um, the second half year. Otherwise, uh, finance cost uh, likely to be double, income tax uh, more than double, and the rest should be uh, very stable. Uh, we comply uh, with uh, our financial ratio. We have a leverage ratio uh, at which stand at 2.59 and coverage ratio uh, which stands at 8.52 percent uh, times on our balance sheet uh, uh, equity is very close to 1 billion euro um, otherwise uh, we have already spoken about the main um, drivers when we spoke about uh, net debt Uh, I will not go into uh, details in this page, just say uh, that we have a very good liquidity uh, headroom, uh, 358 million euro net debt uh, with uh, uh, no uh, short term maturing, maturing line that you will see on the next page. Uh, before 2027, uh, we have no significant line which matures. We have the factoring which we renew uh, each year, but uh, I would say it's uh, the same every year. I will uh, give the speech and hand over to Abderrahman al Ophir for the outlook part, and then afterwards we will answer your questions. Thank you, Pierre. 
So our outlook for the, the short term, I mean, given the market's condition, it is unlikely that we're going to offset you know, the variance uh, uh, versus 2023 in H2 to 24. Uh, however, we are expecting you know, to be between 300 million and 310 million. Okay, we, we, uh, as I said before, we are in a positive dynamic where the first quarter has been bad, but I mean, the second one has been a lot better. And the third one, even if it's not over, we are achieving uh, good numbers and uh, the positive dynamic is continuing. We in the, <coughs> in the half two, we, we will have a lower capex than in uh, half one. So, uh, and there, there will be no dividend payments. So we're expecting a generation, a better generation of cash flow. Um, as I said before, even if the results are lower than the last year, they are a lot better than our competitors that, that's published their numbers, the ones that uh, are listed in, in the stock markets. Uh, the group expects you know, to benefit from the capex that has already engaged in you know, a previous year with the, the improvements of the economic situation in the upcoming years. Okay. For the long term, we are pretty confident because as I said, we are operating in a growing sector and uh, the demand of uh, scrap uh, uh, ferrous metal and scrap non-ferrous metal will be high and we are very confident that, I mean, given our uh, business model, that we are going to achieve, you know, very good numbers and very good growth. And uh, thank you. And we are willing now to listen to your questions. And uh, maybe, you know, to give the calendar. Okay, so just uh, give you uh, the calendar of next year. So. Thank you, Abderrahman. Uh, we have uh, a few questions. Um, we, we will answer to, to, to some of them. For confidentiality reasons, we may not be able to answer questions we relate to uh, unit margins. Uh, I know that we used to do that a few years ago, but uh, some competitors uh, were using this information. So now we disclose a let, little less about uh, unit margin so uh, questions about decrease in unit margins for or uh, absolute mar um, unit margins for ferrous uh, we will not uh, answer precisely nevertheless uh, if you like mathematics as we have uh, spoken about our decrease in volumes uh, for for ferrous and non-ferrous and as we have given the absolute value of decrease in gross margin, you can deduct uh, or estimate the uh, decrease in the unit margin in uh, in ferrous and non-ferrous. In part, I would say it's mainly ferrous when we had a lower unit margin for two reasons, uh, three, re three reasons, uh, market uh, conditions, cyber attack, and also uh, the commitments to to deliver volumes with uh, low or no margins to uh, to the remedy remedies site. Uh, there is a question about the sustainability. Uh, if we can sustain uh, three percent EBIT margin in service to municipalities, uh, I would say uh, yes. There is a question for you about the level of capex during H2. Will it be 100 million euro? Will it be lower? Well, no, no, we will be lower. We are expecting uh, a total capex for the uh, total fiscal year between 160 and 165 million euro for the for the, uh, the whole year. For the for just for uh, uh, this uh, figure given by Adam and Elofir does not include a new leases which could be uh, 
uh, if some are implemented uh, during the year. It's, I would say, tangible uh, capex. Mm. Uh, there is a um, very accurate questions about the level of factoring uh, at the end of March. Uh, I have the number, which it's 282 million euro, and there is still 20 million which stands on our balance sheet. So the, the, the recognition of receivables is 262 million euro. Uh, can you give us free cash flow during um, this year compared to prior year? So uh, I would say that free cash flow, um, we have a deleveraging this year by uh, 4 million euro. If you um, add the 25.9 million euro dividends, uh, so you are at 29.5 million. Uh, I would say that at least the numbers, um, I don't have the, I will give you the number from last year. Just a few seconds. So last year, uh, we had an increase by um, nearly uh, 80 million uh, in H1 in, in debt. Uh, out of that, there were in, included in that, there was uh, 51 million euro dividend included. So it means it was negative cash flow uh, by around uh, 30 million uh, euro. I don't see any other questions for the time being. So if there is no additional question, uh, we will uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, should you have a, a question after the meeting, uh, feel free to, to contact us. Uh, and unless there is uh, any speci any news specific news to report, our next results will be on December fifth. Uh, Abderman Alofi and uh, myself are uh, very grateful for your attention, and uh, we we thank you and uh, say goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye.